guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And my yearly video is here. This video, I really wanted to make it as crisp and as complete as possible. So this is all about third year. So as you know, I'm done with third year and I did pretty well. Now I want to impart all the gyan I have right back at you. This video is going to cover a lot of general aspects to the approach to the subjects as well as all the resources that I have personally used. I will make a comment or two about the resources that I've seen my friends using. Uh, for starters, I know everybody talks about third year being the easiest year where you can actually take a chill pill. But I would say if you're not someone who's writing Emily, because in that case third year is not a chill pill. If you're someone who's focusing on neat PG, I want you to start taking your medicine, surgery, peds and all those other subjects seriously from third year itself. Because if you relax and tone down the momentum that you have had in first and second year during third year, it will be pretty difficult for fourth year. And that being said, yes, third year is relatively chiller. I would also like you to use third year as sort of a rest year for fourth year. Rest money is not that you are not going to be able to but thoda thoda padhai karo and if you're going to the US, I would say you can utilize the entirety of third year to focus on your CV building for researchers, for leadership positions, stuff like that because that's what I did in third year. Um, I studied for Emily, I had to fulfill my leadership responsibilities as well as wrap up a few researchers here and there which is why my third year, regardless of the subjects being chiller, wasn't as chill. And most importantly, I decided to take a long mental health break in third year for about six months during the second half of the third year. Which is why it's important to know that even after taking break, even after doing multiple other things, I still fared pretty well in my university exams. So that should give you a good estimate of how much you're supposed to be studying this year for these particular subjects. I am only referencing to ComEd, ENT, Ophthal and Forensic. I am not taking into consideration the non-core subjects or the fourth year subjects here because if you include them in, yeah, it's not going to be as chill academically. Let's start with my favorite subject, my absolute favorite subject, which is ophthalmology. Okay, so ophthal is my favorite subject just because of this book. This book is the only, and I repeat, only resource of ophthalmology that I have used in terms of books. It's called Mittal, I call it Mittal. It's by Sanjeev Kumar Mittal and Rajkumar Agarwal. Yeah, uh, it is from a really good publication as well. I know a lot of people use Khurana, but personally I found Khurana to be not such a great book. I really, honestly, it was all written in points. Nothing made sense, no concepts went into my brain. And it was just a lot of knowledge scrambled into pointers. And that's not how I read. This book has beautiful flowcharts, it has a lot of explanations as to why something happens because once you learn the whys of things, it's very easy to remember stuff. So I did use Khurana uh, for one thing though, right before my practical exams, there are a bunch of questions in the back pages of Khurana that I read through. They were pretty good and I think if you just want to use that part of Khurana, you can probably get it from a library or the PDF copy. You don't really have to uh, spend on that book. Other than this, when I talk about online resources, I basically just went on YouTube and any surgery I had to understand, I would watch videos on it. In fact, I link a really good video of cataract surgeries that I've watched that really cleared all my concepts of cataract. So all the links that I'll be mentioning, all the YouTube channels I'll be mentioning will be in the description. So go on to the description after this and save them up. Most importantly, pay attention in postings. Utilize posting time to revise the entirety of ophthalmology. Postings are the best thing to exist in medical college. You can really use that time and the resources that you get during posting to get a great understanding of ophthal and ENT. So I would credit most of my marks in post, uh, most of my marks in theory and practicals to the posting time that I spent in ophthal. I utilized all three hours to study ophthal and nothing else. So yeah, great subject, great book, and you have a lot of resources online. Next subject, ENT. ENT, interesting part about ENT is that I got a gold medal in ENT this year. Um, but other than that, uh, ENT was always interesting for me since 
second year when we had the postings so i think my biggest credit for ent more than any book goes to the postings if you have a good department then utilize the time you have in ent to learn the instruments to learn the x rays go through x rays go through each and every concept and find out the why's i cannot emphasize enough on how important it is to find out the why's in these subjects because you know i was telling you how i had a huge mental health break for the past uh, for the last 6 months of uh, third year despite having that mental health break the reason i was able to do well in the clinical subjects at least i am only referencing to ent and of that because your knowledge in these subjects is mostly made during your clinics and if you are able to spend your time well in clinics then it really becomes easier for you ent ke liye the only resource that i used was um, actually not only i used dhingra mostly like you will see my dhingra properly annotated and everything like that but there were a few topics and a few flow charts that i really liked from hazarika uh, for example minier's disease <laughs> that's very specific but yeah there are a few topics that i would rather use hazarika for but at the end of the year i only preferred using one book so i got dhingra although our uh, hod and our department people they wrote another book um, it's called pillai and that book a lot of my friends started using in the middle of the term because the book came out then and i went through that book and that is an amazing book too and that has honestly a lot of extensive information and it's very clinically based so if you want to try out a new book i would definitely recommend going for pillai because it was a great book i also heard a lot about marrow being really good for ent so if you are someone who already has a marrow subscription then i have also watched one lecture of ent on marrow and i i liked it really much. i i really liked it i really liked the way the teacher explained stuff so if you want it as an additional resource you can take that otherwise bro youtube is free resources you get everything for free you just have to figure out what's the right channel for you and what's the right teaching methodology for you that's it obviously um for ent and optal one another really good resource was my posting notes that's what i primarily revise before going for the final exams ka practicals and stuff ent and optal were pretty much done now coming to community medicine and forensic medicine so as you know these subjects are the subjects that are being taught to you since uh first and second year mostly second year um i i wouldn't say i completely ignored them in second year but i also wouldn't say that i gave them enough attention in second year but if i had to go back and change one thing about my second year it would be at least getting all the resources together of community medicine and forensics because i understand second year can be a very taxing year and you won't have a lot of time to give to subjects other than pharmac path and micro but if you do have time then start reading parks and start reading forensics a little bit in second year too i read a bit of it i used to read the class pptes and i used to read for the exams but that's about it i wouldn't say it really messed up my uh, comed or forensic but it would have really helped me if i was more equipped with my second year knowledge of community medicine and forensic before i entered third year regardless of that you will have enough time to finish second year uh, portions of community medicine and forensics in third year i honestly started studying for the second year part of it after my first sessional exam which is after one half of third year and i still was able to cover it because most of the topics they repeated or most of the topics you already know from micro path pharmac or just previous knowledge so you don't have to worry about that coming to my resources for forensic medicine i've had two basic resources uh, oh no i tore a page <gasps> methyl alcohol is gone i this was a life saver this is called francis notes i can link this as well in the description so francis notes is um, something a lot of my batch people use for forensic medicine it has really well defined concepts uh, and it's very easy to read and honestly there's not much you need to know beyond francis notes but if you're someone who wants to go the extra mile i also used reddy so reddy ka bada book hota hai but i feel like reddy is so weirdly written that i didn't feel like studying reddy but the only reason i started doing it is because second year for a 
part of it i did read ready for forensics and uh, there are a lot of topics in ready which are not in francis notes a lot of small uh, self reading topics that are there like narco analysis or artifacts or um dna fingerprinting all those things all the new things that have been introduced into the syllabus as well as a few of the toxins and topics such as uh, virginity pregnancy abortion i have done from this book and this book also has pictures so it really makes it easier i did my own split of topics from this book and that book but i would say for most part of it this was more helpful than this but when you're thinking of it in terms of um, university exams getting all your answers right or answering well in vivas then i would also recommend you to reference this book a lot of people read babu from my uh, batch but i mean i saw the book it's very thin and it doesn't do justice to the subject i heard although it was pretty good as a revision for toxicology i wouldn't completely recommend you to rely just on babu resources again dude i'm not even kidding everything is on youtube you want to learn practicals you want to learn age determination sex determination of bones everything is on youtube and you don't really need a lot of concepts as such in forensics so don't worry about it books are enough um finally you have uh, this one this this thick sorry this thick buddy this is uh park uh you know ye kuch bahut hi gande halat mein hai abhi but this is my park and park is the only thing you need for comment do it hamare class mein we kept making jokes about how park is a bengali woman and that's why she's writing a lot of paragraphs i know it's offensive but honestly with this book it's true <laughs> इस बुक में इवन इफ यू रीड द टाइटल्स ऑफ एवरीथिंग एंड गो फॉर द एग्जाम यू विल बी फाइन आई वुडेंट कंप्लीटली एनकरेज दैट बट फॉर लास्ट मिनट रिविजन जस्ट रीड द टाइटल्स एंड गो आई एम नॉट इवन केयरिंग मोस्ट पार्ट ऑफ पार्क्स व्हिच इज माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एपिडेमियोलॉजी एंड एवरीथिंग यू ऑलरेडी नो फ्रॉम माइक्रोबायो इन सेकंड ईयर एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ इट व्हिच इज द एक्चुअल कम्युनिटी मेडिसिन यू विल लर्न रियली वेल इन योर कम्युनिटी मेडिसिन पोस्टिंग व्हिच यू कैन गो थ्रू फ्रॉम पार्क्स for us we had a great resource called killing spree which is uh, made by one of our senior he compiled all important questions and uh, really really good answers for the same into a notion website i heavily relied on notion but do that only as a last minute revision i wouldn't use that as your primary source of learning use park but if you're using part then make sure you make notes that's the one mistake i did i didn't make notes and i had to read through all these paragraphs again and again and again which becomes pretty cumbersome and community medicine is a very easy subject to remember it's most of it once you know the general points it's very easy to write answers that being said aise mat karo ki tum sab ke liye same answer likh do you need to have an understanding of what question they're asking for my community medicine practicals so uh, i went to this uh, website called i hate psm.com or something that really helped me they had pretty concise things of what they expect from you in a community medicine practical and also in your college they will make you do uh, practicals for forensic medicine and community medicine pay attention in them because your whatever you learn for practicals in uh, fmd in fmt or comed you will be using that to write your theory answers as well and practicals are as important as theory so do not neglect them i don't think there is a specific approach to this subject other than just reading it and hoping you remember it it's just reading and rereading forensic and comed are mostly uh, slightly ratta mar subjects ent and ofthal are mostly understanding subjects so you have to approach them accordingly you'll come to realize that you don't need a lot of revisions for ent ofthal but you need a lot of it for comed and forensic the take home message from this video is just going to be that pay attention in class if you want make notes in class or you can underline in the book that's what i did uh, try to read whatever is done on that particular day on the same day itself it saves a lot of time at the end and use simple resources don't go for multiple resources the third year is a simple year you just have to figure out what's your method of study and 
I do get a lot of questions about Maru. It's on you. If you're someone who needs videos and who wants simplified videos, then sure, go ahead. But if you're someone who needs to read the book to grasp the concepts, then there's no point of getting Maru. Because you're going to read the book and you're going to have the same knowledge at the, at the end. There are a few telegram groups for Maru notes and stuff. So if you want those for revision, you can definitely take them. I'm not very sure about the credibility of it though. So do that at your own discretion. I will definitely make a video on how I managed to crack the clinical subjects that is ENT and Ophthal with good marks right after this particular video. And after that video, I was thinking once I give my USMLE, I will have a series of USMLE videos, which a lot of you have been asking for. But let me clear the exam first because I don't want to be making a video and not clearing the exam. That is one innate fear I have. So please. <laughs> That's really about it in third year. Very simple year. Don't think too much. Have fun. Be well rested. Figure out what your goals are for the next few years so that you can start working on them from third year itself. And I think you'll have a good time. Take this from me. Little consistent efforts every day and you're good to go really good to go i'm sorry i'm loving the sun on me i don't know if it's coming right now but brown girls and sun and brown eyes and mm, sun kissed i am so f i'm really too filmy to be existing in this profession i think i'm officially reaching that point of my youtube journey where i'm using this as a personal journal more than anything but if you have any videos that you really want to see from me then definitely let me know because i would love to make them for you i'm gonna go back and study or watch gilmore girls but anyways bye bye thank you for watching